Hi guys, welcome to the eighth episode of the second season of the Belgian travel series. This time I'm going on a trip through Wallonia, guide you through all the highlights of this beautiful region. I think I will visit about 60 different places spread over four episodes. It will maybe be the most complete vlog series you will find about Wallonia on YouTube. Wallonia is a French speaking region in southern Belgium. It's known for its medieval towns, Renaissance era architecture and traditional Trappist beers. Our first stop is a little village called Kruppe. Kruppe is a town that belongs to Le Plus Beau Villages de Wallonie. In this time you can visit old mud half timbered houses and the castle of Carondelet from the 13th century. Close to Kruppe you can also visit the cave of Saint Anthony of Padua, a special place of pilgrimage in honor of that saint. Our second stop is a very popular place in Wallonia, the city of Dinant. On the banks of the river Maas you will find the village of Dinant. Here a citadel was built to protect the inhabitants against attacks from the village. You can only visit the citadel by taking the cable car up or taking the stairs. Both ways are quite expensive because you have to pay 11 euros for a ticket, but once you're up there the view is really amazing. The gigantic complex also houses a museum about the First World War. You can also visit the house of Adolf Sax, the inventor of the saxophone, or visit the abbey of the famous beer Leffe.
Not far from Dinant you will find one of the most beautiful castles in Wallonia, the Chateau or Castle of Walzin. This fertile castle has been modified several times over the centuries. Unfortunately, this castle is private property, so you can't visit this except of the gardens. Guided tours are available in the summer. Even if you're not allowed inside, the view of the castle is really beautiful. During a walk in the Parc de Fervos, you have beautiful angles from the castle everywhere. Of the stop number four, the little village called Sel. The village of Sel is also one of the most beautiful villages in Wallonia. If you grew up with lovely fairy tales, a visit to this place is really worth it. The heart of the village is full with beautiful medieval buildings. The village owes its popularity mainly because of one of the most beautiful castles in this region, the castle Selvev. So our next stop is the Abbey of Maritsu and I think after this I can do one or two more destinations before I have to look for a camping spot. The Maritsu Abbey is a large complex consisting of three parts, the Abbey buildings, the brewery and cheese factory and the visitor buildings. This Benediction Abbey was founded in 1872 and houses a number of monks. You can only visit the church of the Abbey. In a visitor center you can taste and buy the cheese and beers. So we're here in the little village of Nismes, from here we can walk the hiking route to Van Rie de Chien and behind me there's a beautiful town hall of the little village of Nismes. In Nismes you can find the Fondry de Chien, also known as the Grand Canyon of Belgium. This gorge has been carved by rainwater that washed out the limestone subsoil for more than a million of years. 
This created a spectacular landscape with rocks and gorges, a unique natural monument. From Nismes you can walk to the Fondry de Chien. You have to follow the yellow signs. It's an easy walk, it's like two kilometers long. So we're here at the last stop of the day, Lac de l'Odeur. The Lac de l'Odeur is a large lake where there is plenty to do. It's the ideal place for families who love water because it's the largest lake in Belgium. In spring and summer you can enjoy water sport activities, water fun and recreation. In the winter you can enjoy beautiful walks and bike rides. So that's it for me for day one. I think we saw a lot. Tomorrow is another big day and uh, I'm gonna find something to eat. I already found myself a sleeping spot. I'm going to a camping near Surfontaine. It's like five minutes from where I am now. And tomorrow we're gonna go to an abbey. We go to see a monument, another abbey. Also the city of Charleroi. And yeah. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning guys, a beautiful day, the weather is good, I slept really good, although it was really cold at night, it's already September so, but we are going to our first stop of the day and that is the Abbey of Olna. Not so far from town in Gose you will find the charming ruins of the Olna Abbey, it's located on a steep valley on the right bank of the Sambra. This location quickly acquired the nickname the Valley of Peace. Bois de Coisier is a coal mine near Chalawa that is unfortunately known for a traumatic event on August 8, 1956. 262 men were killed that day by a severe underground fire. 
This disaster resulted in a tightening of the safety standards in the mines. Coal mining in central Belgium has never been the same since that day and Bois de Casier gave the start for this. Today it's open for public. You can explore the old domain, walk around to the old mining station and honor the memorials. A visit is really worthwhile as the mine has even been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage City. OMW, on my way to you. Good at what I do. I'm OMW, watch me walk away. So, Bois de Cassier is closed, that's too bad, I didn't know that. And it's also very sad that my drone broke uh, yesterday. So I can't go over it and I'm going to take a few videos of it uh, from the outside. And then we will go to our next stop, the city of Charleroi. Charleroi is located in the central southern part of Belgium in the province of Hainaut. It's the largest city in Wallonia and the third largest city in Belgium. Charleroi has been known for years as a great industrial city. The city has long been dependent on the coal mines and the steel industry. After the disappearance of these industries, Charleroi had high unemployment and crime rates. Fortunately, there has been a change in income over the recent decades. With money from Brussels, companies are lured to establish themselves in or around the city. Tourism is on the rise, partly with the revival of the airport of Charleroi. The highlights of the city are the Belfry, the Hotel de Ville and the St. Christopher's Church. So there you see the city hall, the belfry and the St. Christopher Church but sadly enough we are working here at the central square so it's kind of empty and ugly <laughs> but when this behind me is all finished it's definitely a cozy place. So my next stop will be the Abbey of Villers, it's 30 minutes from Chalois. The Abbey of Villers is definitely one of the most beautiful places in Wallonia. Nearly 900 years of history is hidden here in the heart of Walloon Brabant. Remarkably well preserved, the ruins of the former Cistercian Abbey are a magical place where nature and heritage go hand in hand.
after the last stop of the day, the line of Waterloo. The line of Waterloo Memorial is a symbol of the Battle of Waterloo fought on June 18, 1815 near Brussels. Then it was one of the biggest battles in Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte lost here against the Allied armies and the Prussian forces. Two centuries later, visitors still come to the battlefield to discover the remains of the battle. I jumped in the ice. Now I'm wrapped up in you can't deny it Hit me like a hurricane of lightning Baby, if I'm dreaming, don't you wake me So that's it for day two here Wallonia, still a week to go and tomorrow we're going to the eastern part of Belgium, the German speaking part of Belgium and we are going to visit a fortress, a mine, a city and by far the most beautiful nature park in Belgium. So do you want to see that? Stay tuned and watch my next episodes of the Belgium travel series and don't forget to subscribe and like and comment and I will see you again in another location. Ciao! <laughs> If you send me the location, then I'll be right there